Hey everybody, welcome back to another grilling video. Today, we're gonna to be doing something kind of interesting. We're gonna be grinding our own ground beef. Why, you might ask? Well, you never really know what's in those tubes of the ground beef at the grocery store. You don't know what cuts of meat it is. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make a delicious blend of meats here. Who doesn't like a bacon burger, right? And as you think you know, most burgers need to be about 80% lean meat and about 20% fat, or 75-25. I like to use 80-20. What I'm gonna do is I have a fairly uh, lean piece of sirloin tip round. I also uh, went ahead and bought a, a bottom boneless round, but again, these are two lean roasts or cuts of meat. Uh, let's see, I've got three and a half pounds and two pounds, so I'm gonna have somewhere around five and a half pounds. So to get an 80-20 mix, I'm gonna wanna want about a pound and a third of fat. So what I decided to do is go ahead and buy uncut bacon. Again, pork fat. We're gonna mix that in with our beef. Should give us some really, really good flavor. Uh, this is one and a half pounds. There's a little bit of meat on it. So again, we're looking at things that are close. We're not needing exact here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these up and I'm gonna begin trimming them. We're gonna cut them into small sizes. I'm gonna put them back in the freezer because they work a lot better in a grinder if you're gonna do that. So we're gonna start by just removing this round from its package. So now that we have our round here, all I really want to do is remove anything that I wouldn't necessarily want to eat. You can kind of see I've got a little bit of, that's not even silver skin, that's probably fine. And we're just going to cut this into about one inch chunks or so. Now, here's a tip. It's best if you get this nice and cold. It sure cuts a lot easier when it's cold. So I went ahead and put these in the freezer for about 20 minutes, just enough to allow me to handle it. Because the, remember, the heat in my hands is going to help warm it up and make it a little bit more pliable. Once we cut these in cubes, we're gonna put it back in the freezer. Now you see how this is fatty and marbled? That's okay, we'll just grind this right up. It'll be perfectly fine in our ground beef. Remember, we want fat in there. Now you'll notice with this bottom round, we have a nice chunk of fat on the bottom of this. That's gonna be, again, just fine for this. You just wanna make sure it doesn't have any kind of silver skin on it, and it does not. Again, cutting this into just nice little one inch or so chunks. The nice thing about this is you don't have to buy the most expensive cut of beef. Uh, we want something decent, a brisket would be phenomenal, but a whole packer brisket right now is about 80 bucks. So this round that was $7 is going to yield me some good ground beef. And by the way, there's a misconception that if you grind your own, it's going to be cheaper than it would be if you bought ground beef. It's not. It's probably going to cost you a little bit more, but you know exactly what's in it. And you don't have to worry about it being the worst cuts of the meat. This is going to be good, fresh, with nothing processed in it. Now, I'm gonna do the same with our bacon. Just like our beef, we're gonna slice this in about one inch chunks or so. Again, keep it nice and cold. It's a lot easier to cut when you do. Yeah, so you can see this here. I've got fat and fat, a little bit of pork there, a little bit of pork there, but this is mostly good fat, which is gonna help put this at a nice 80-20 mix or so. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay this in the freezer. We'll put it out on the tray, put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes to 45 minutes. We don't wanna freeze it completely and make it too solid, but it certainly goes through the grinder a lot better when it's nice and hard. If it gets really soft and rubbery, that fat's just gonna sort of clog it up and it's gonna give me the consistency of uh, really, really fine sausage, or almost a hot dog mash, and we don't want that. I want this to be nice and chunky, a good patty for ground beef. So while those meat chunks are in the freezer, we've gone ahead and set up the grinder. Now it's kind of interesting. You can do a bunch of different um, size openings. That essentially determines the coarseness of the meat. I'm gonna double grind this. I'm gonna start with this sort of very coarse grind, mainly just because I don't want to have any of the meat begin to get paste-like as it, as it crumbles through there. And then we have 10 or seven millimeter holes. We're probably gonna do this with seven millimeters. It'll be a nice coarse burger. It might actually be too coarse. We'll check it out as we go forward. So let's just go ahead and get this going here. I'm gonna start dropping some of these right in there. I'm gonna 
put a few in here. You don't want to push down on this. You don't want to grab, uh, clog it up. Let the auger pull it in. As you can see, this is looking really good. Nice and coarse. We'll probably end up grinding it just a little finer when we're all said and done here. Now, Boy, you can see how, just how good this looks. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. And what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna pour this right out on this tray. I'm gonna change the die here and we're gonna start cutting this again real quick. I'm gonna do this before it heats up too much. And now I am just going to repeat that entire process by putting this back in there. All right, and there we have amazing amount of ground beef. We'll make this up into a nice hamburger patty. We'll do one large one and I'm gonna make a little slider as a test. Um, typically I do these at about three and a half ounces. Perfect slider size. And if you make them as smash burgers, you're basically making it like a meatball. You drop it on your flat top or cast iron skillet. Go 30 seconds or so, get it nice and charred on one side and then smash it down and hold it for 15, 20 seconds before you remove your press. It's looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit. I'll put this back in the fridge for now. We'll come back out, we'll grill one, we'll give it a try. Really is pretty simple. By the way, I'll put a link to this grinder down in the uh, description. This thing's pretty nice. It comes with a little foot pedal, and I have a, a high and low and reverse mode back here. And the nice thing is all I have to do, press, uh, first hit it on low, and then press the foot pedal and you hear it run really nice because it gives you the ability to continue to use both hands it comes with a whole number of different dies so you have plenty of different grinds along with an attachment for making sausage so that's going to be one of the things we'll do in an upcoming video but this thing's under 200 bucks um and it's it's pretty beefy um it's the stx turbo force whatever um you know but you saw it just handle seven pounds of beef there without any kind of problem. If you are a hunter and you're making your own venison sausage or ground meat out of whatever it is you're catching, this would work just fine. And kind of lightweight, not too bad to store once you take all the accessories off of it. Loosen that up, take this, and we will head on in and clean this up. See you back out here on the Blackstone. All right, we got the moment of truth. I have the two middle burners on here and 375 on that burner. Now we're already up to 370 on this one. So I think that's pretty good. I like using these burger presses and the ones that have the little um, ridges on them. I'll smash it down a little bit more though. They do stick a little bit. I always oil the actual press and I put it right down on the griddle so it gets nice and warm. By the way, when you do that, make sure you hold the wooden handle. I wasn't looking and I just touched the side of it. It's hot, about 350 degrees. So let's start with one of our small smash burgers here. And we've got Toss it back and forth to help pack it in real good. And we will drop that right down on the griddle. And you can hear that sizzle. That's exactly what we wanna hear. Now I am just putting a little bit of salt on this and when I flip it, I'll do a little bit more. I like to let these go for about 35 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute, not much longer. What I'm really wanting to do is get it just a little bit brown on the bottom. Then we're just gonna take our press and we're gonna press right down on it. Put a little pressure and hold it there for another 20 to 30 seconds. Now I get my spatula ready here because I'm gonna scrape the bottom of this in the direction of the grate. Now the hardest thing to do is resist the temptation to flip this. What you're gonna notice is you'll start to see some blood and liquid coming up to the top of the burger. That's a good thing, let it go. What we want to do is get a little caramelization, a little bit of that um, uh, brownness on the bottom. Seared meat gives it a really, really good taste. I'm going to zoom in and show you what that looks like. All right, it's time to flip and nothing fancy here. We want to get the spatula under it, flip it over, season it. That's it. Without further ado, let's get this pulled off of here. I'm going to put it up on the cutting board. I'm going to taste test this just like it is, not on a bun, not with mayo, nothing else. We just wanna know how good that tastes. We've got this burger sitting right here on the cutting board. I did wash this cutting board 
Certainly don't want to cross contaminate it with uncooked meat. I'm just going to cut this into a couple little slices here. It's nice and juicy too. And we'll just give it a shot. Again, this is the best way to know how good it is instead of masking it with all the flavors of a burger. By <laughs> good flavors, but all the flavors of a burger. Unlike most burgers you get that are going to be ground a little bit finer than that, this has a meaty texture, a bit of bite to it. Really is tasty. Simple seasoning with nothing but the salt, amazing way to do it. And the little chunks of um, pork fat in there, you can taste the bacon. It tastes like a bacon burger. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make up some more of these, uh, these smash burger balls here. We are going to have smash burgers for dinner. I'm just going to go ahead and bring some of this in to let the rest of the family taste it before we make up all the burgers. This is really a neat way to do this. And if you, if you have a desire to know where your food's coming from and be in control of the flavors and, and what goes into it, I'd encourage you to do exactly this. It's fairly inexpensive. Like I said, we buy these grills that are three to $600 each uh, if you're a smoker or a griller. And, and spending $200 on a good meat grinder that's perfect for a home user just seems like a no-brainer. I wish I'd have done it sooner because these are really, really good. And I love the fact that I'm in control of what goes into this. Think about making a nice coarse ground beef to do in some kind of a ragu spaghetti sauce, right? Like there's just a ton of stuff you can do. All right. Thanks, everybody. Safe and happy grilling. We'll see you next week. Bye now.